I'd like to welcome everyone in my online presentation of Kawhi Leonard. We're going to take a deep dive into Kawhi's game offensively and defensively to show players and coaches from all over the world what makes him one of the more dominating players in the game today. You won't find a more fundamentally sound player that could dominate the game by just playing simple. So sit back and relax and let's break down some film. Let's go to work. So here are the topics that we're going to be discussing. First, we're going to go into the development of Kawhi's shot from an inconsistent shooter as a sophomore at San Diego State to just seven months later as a rookie coming out of the lockout with the Spurs to a totally revamped and retooled shot. I'm going to take a look at his offensive footwork from the perimeter, starting with his catch-and-shoot game and then his catch-and-drive game in the mid-range pull-ups going right and left. I'm going to take a look at a straight-line drive game and how he's just such efficient with just going in straight line and drives and what makes him one of the better finishers in the game today. I'm going to take a look at his screen and rolls. Not only how he sets up his defender you know, with scoring plays, but also making plays for his teammates. I'm going to take a look at his ISO game and his revamped ball handling that you saw flourish in Toronto and, and the Clippers. And how he creates space by not only on the jab catch game, but also taking his defenders off the dribble. I'm going to take a look at his post-up game that's right out of MJ and Kobe's book. And then lastly, we're going to take a look at his defense and some of the traits that makes him one of the more dominating defensive players in the game today. Let's sit back, relax, and let's go to work. One of the biggest knocks on Kawhi coming into the NBA was his inability to make the three-point shot in college. His number was at 29% as a sophomore at San Diego State. And it wasn't just a number, but it was his form and technique. He used to bring his ball, as you're going to see in the film, he would bring that ball back way far behind his ear on the shot, which makes it inconsistent with not only the release point, but the timing of the release. So in body mechanics, it just sort of messes the shot up, and his shot would be all over the place. He did with what most players wouldn't do. He retooled and revamped his shot in six months, not even being with the Spurs staff because right after the draft, they got into a lockout in 2011, which he had to do that on his own throughout the summertime. When he came back to the Spurs, as you're going to see in the film, his shot was totally revamped and retooled. And in development, it just makes your game so much easier when you can make shots from deep because now defenders have to play you, which now opens up your drive game. He had one of the more probably the largest turnaround as a shooter that I've ever seen from a, a, his last year in college to first year in the NBA. Usually it takes players five, six years to change that, and by the time that happens, they're probably out of the league. So you're going to take a look at it. We're going to take a deep dive, and let's go to work. So before we start up, I just want everyone to know, coaches and players, that if you have a broken shot, you can still make shots. It doesn't mean you're going to miss, you're going to miss every shot that you take. But the important thing to understand was that somebody got in his ear and just told him or he told himself that, look, shot's broken. It needs to be fixed. Even though you're making some shots long term wise, it just it wasn't going to be a consistent and accurate shot. So I don't want you to think that we're just going to have all these clips in San Diego State of him missing shots because that's not what it's about. It's not about result with these things. It's about the process and what you do to make yourself a better shooter. All right, so I want you to understand and look at the shot in San Diego State and then look at it six months later you know, when he was with the San Antonio Spurs and just sort of the differences of the shot and what it looks like. All right, let's go to work. So as you can see, right there is the problem, bringing the ball way far behind his ear, and it's just sort of a sling and a throw. Even though it goes in, it's just a hard shot to, to control. Here, as you can see again, I don't care about the result there, but what I care about is that. It's just an elbow far out and that ball way tucked, way, way behind that ear. And as you can see, there's a lot of motion in there. That, that, that guide hand on the left just sort of like into the shot, just a lot, a lot of movement, throwing it down, and it's just hard to get accuracy shooting the ball like that and get power. Now, he had power in his shot. I mean, it was a line drive, but he had power to get the ball to the rim, and just he had some clangers there, but it just was an inconsistent shot. The arc was inconsistent. Where he threw, you know, put the ball back was inconsistent, but he can get a shot off. And, it, you know, some of these misses aren't terrible, 
but it's just the form and technique that he had to change. Again, I mean, he was just fighting a lot of bad things here. Bringing the ball way back, elbows a little out of position, and he shot a low arcing shot with very little touch on it. That's a recipe of disaster when you're shooting the ball. But he could raise up and shoot off the dribble, as you can see there. I mean, he can get it off, but it just wasn't an accurate shot. So as you can see, it doesn't look terrible. His feet weren't awful. You know, very little movement on that. Got the ball to the rim. And at some times it was on target, but it was just such an inconsistent ball coming out of the hands because of how far he threw the ball back. As you can see, he can make a few. And that's not the point. The point is needing to change because of the fact that it was broken. So as you can see there, you know, the arc wasn't bad on that one, but it's just an inconsistent shot. And bringing the ball far back like that is a tough deal. Now let's take a look at the Spurs. And now look at the shot and where it looks like here. Now it's a low release point, but look where the shot is right there compared to where it was at San Diego. In front of the head and just more compact and more consistent getting to the basket. And it was a more fluent shot. As you can see, it just looks a lot better. I don't care if it goes in, it doesn't go in. It's the actual shot that you're looking at, not the result. Because the result's going to take some time. But he could step into that thing. It was a fluent ball coming out of the... Look how effortless it's, it is coming out of the hand. And now, in a, this is just his rookie year. Like two, three years from now, that ball's going to be a real high release, like a LaMarcus Aldridge, just way high up. But here, just in a shorter period of time making that change to get the ball in front of his head from behind it. I mean, usually it takes literally 8 to 14 months minimum to make that change. The guy made it almost overnight, and it's a lot to be said. And look at his percentage numbers. We're at almost 30, I think 37.6% as a rookie shooting the ball from way further than the college line where he shot the ball at 29% just a year before. But it's effortless. It's, it's just sort of more compact shot. Chip England, their shooting coach and their, their player development director, is one of the best in the game. And there's a lot to be said for that. So you just got to understand that putting the work in, putting the time in, is, is something that really paid dividends for him. One of the favorite parts of Kawhi's game that I enjoy watching is his footwork. On his catch and shoot, it's just such an easy transition to a left-right, one-two step into the shot. He wastes very little time, little space, and little effort getting that shot off. Now his mid-range pull-up game, which he's one of the tops in the league at, is a little different because he's not consistent with a one-two step into the shot. He doesn't left-right into his rights and right-left into his lefts. He switches from one-twoing into the shot to hopping into the shot. One of the only players in the league that I see do that switch in between both, uh, both sets of you know, principles. But it's, it's the fundamental building blocks of any wing player's offensive game is their footwork on the perimeter on the catch and shoot and catch and drive. So let's take a look and let's dive in. A lot of stopping on this, but again, on the catch, I want you to just notice the one-two and how easily and quickly he gets his shot off. All right, so let's just start with the catch and shoot and we'll go from there. Again, just plants his feet, not a lot of stepping going on, not a lot of movement, gets the shot off quickly, and just spacing on the perimeter, just on that one-two, get the shot off, doesn't waste any time. Same thing, shot ready into the shot. Quick shot right at the rat basket. And as you can see, his release point's pretty high on it. So now on the one dribble game, look at the footwork. It's right, left, right just like the Kobe film that we watched last week. Same thing, get him on a fake, one dribble into it, catch one dribble shot. Now he's setting it up, off the jab, again, footwork right, left, right. He's off balance a lot in the shots, but just getting that ball, getting that body squared, and just that one dribble, getting that shot off quick. Now let's go to the left. And again, watch the difference between the two drives here on a 1-2 and then on a hop. This is going to be a 1-2. Catches it, two dribbles, right, left, so a little fade away at the end, but pretty basic, pretty crisp on his, on his pull-up. Now he's going to catch, fake, and a little hop into the shot, which is just weird to me because it's usually a consistent thing. Either you hop or you 1-2. He likes to do both, 
but doesn't taste, you know, doesn't waste a lot of time on it. Whatever move that Kawhi makes on the perimeter, it doesn't matter if it's a catch and go or an off the dribble move where it's a spin or a change direction, he always gets back to a straight line. He wastes very little time, effort, and it's all about angles for him. So watch, and I want you to focus in on how low he is, how he likes to initiate contact with his defender, how he uses that off arm and shoulder to protect him from defenders, and how his angle is always straight to the basket. He doesn't mess around. He just, he just gets right into a straight line drive and makes him one of the better finishers in the game today. Kawhi being one of the better finishers in the league, a lot of these finishers are going to be above the rim. Don't worry about the finish. Worry about how he gets to that finish. And then finish however you want. But a lot of these are going to be dunks. Obviously, he's an NBA player, one of the better players in the league. He's going to get up a lot. But watch the little things that he does. The off arm, the shoulder, finishing. When he makes a move, just going in straight lines. All right, so let's just go to work. Here, just waste a little time with LeBron. Just gets there, uses, uses his right shoulder to sort of fend him off a little bit. No weak side defense from the Lakers, just mis- miscommunication. Here, he just catches and goes. Again, plants that left foot and doesn't waste any time here. Plants that left, drives the right, you know, gets body contact, takes the hit, and one. Here, Butler's just going to go for a stab, but he just steps on his throat on the catch and just finishes at the rim. Here, we talked about it before. We'll watch it after he finishes. As a defender, when you open up a defender on the open up, they're going to follow two things, your, your moving foot and the ball. So as he opens up and opens up to the middle, the defender leans to the left. He sees that, plays right off of that, and just goes right there. Right for the finish. Just open up and go. Here's going to be a change direction, change speeds. And watch on, on the move. Forget about how bad Philly's defense here is. No one really cares where the ball's at. When he makes his move, how he gets lower and he changes his speed. Here's going to be a jab, spin. We talked about it. Any move that he makes, he gets back to straight lines. Jabs to the right, drives left, spins back to the right. Again, straight line drive to the basket, uses his body and one. Here in Minnesota, no one really stops the ball. But anytime he makes that change of direction, he just changes the speed and then makes his drive. Changing speeds are a big part of the game on your drives. Here, Dorian Finney-Smith, one of the better defenders in the league, that's tough to stop because he uses his body, gets to a straight line, and just physical on the finish. Changes the speed, slows it down, finish. Using his body very well. Here should be a poster on everybody's wall. But again, just wasting no time on the catch and go. Full head of steam, two foot finish. That's rough. Here's another catch and you know, open up and drive. Again, watch how the, def- def- the defense reacts. Open up, defender leans with him. We're going to follow that moving foot. Once that foot lands, keeps that left foot down, and then he's gone. Great finish. Here's just going to be from that, we're just catching the perimeter, that little spin move. Again, straight lines as well. Catch, straight line drive, finish at the rim. During players' careers, they take jumps in their player development. Most players do. Some don't. But with Kawhi in San Antonio, did so much on the just the 3 and D type player. The catch and shoot, catch and drive, post-up game, some pick and roll, some isolation. But when he got to Toronto, he was probably asked to do a lot more with his isolation game and dribbling the ball and just doing stuff off his ball handling. His ball handling, he must have worked super hard to develop because it it really opens up a lot in his game. Again, it starts with his shot making, but now the ability to put the ball on the floor and raise up over defenders and be able to make shots consistently just makes him almost an impossible player to defend. I want you to look at the way he sets his defenders up on his catch and jab, just playing off a, a defender's movement, and then his off the dribble game where when he gets into his move, how he changes speeds, changes on his chain speeds, he also gets lower and uses his body. He reads his defender great. A lot of fakes, a lot of spins, a lot of different moves. So let's dive in and let's go to work.
Now, sometimes it's just easy as just opening up, the, opening up, seeing a defender's hands down, and just getting your shot off. As you see here, it just opens up, defender plays back, no real, you know, nothing really in his face. Now as, now as you open up, you know, Tucker's there as he opens up. Drop that jab. Defender goes back, respects it, shot off the jab. Just playing off your defender. It's pretty basic. Again, coming at him. Jab. See as he keeps that ball protected. Now Kobe and MJ was more left hip. He's more in between his legs. Scottie Pippen was like that where he kept the ball sort of hidden, Latrell Sprewell, where they kept the ball sort of protected in between their legs. But he does a great job shielding the ball, getting a shot off from the wing, from the perimeter. Now the ball handle we're talking about. And I don't care how many times he can put it between his legs. That's not a big concern with me. But just look at how he gets low, and he changes his speeds right to his two-dribble drive fadeaway. Just strong ball handler, able to now put it the ball where and you know where he wants to put it when he wants to put it there. Sort of just dribbles in Alexander to sleep here, takes him out, couple of dribbles, change the speeds, and then get into that little bump two dribble game. That's a Sam Cassell special. A lot of people say, "Well, it's over dribble, it's over dribble." It's not my cup of tea on teaching, but when you're able to control the ball like that. And, you, and then once you get to your move, you just change speeds and get to your kill spot. you got to respect that. And we talked about that spin that he likes to do on the drive. Again, Harden sort of commits to that middle, trying to stop him, does everything he can to do it. So again, when a defender sort of you know, stops you from doing something, you open it up with something else. That little spin, little fade away, jump shot in the paint. And change directions, pretty tight on the dribble. Sort of has Kleber here. Kleber does a good job. He just changes direction from right to left. Little bump, two dribbles, two dribble pull up. That's tough to stop. Now here with Dontich, he'll he'll come at him with that little fake spin. And just like we talked about in the Kobe film last week, when you spin, spin, spin all the time, people are gonna overplay to that spin. So what he does here is he has that little fake spin. Now watch as he you know, drops that left leg like he's going to spin. Doncic has to respect it. He's going to get a movement out of that and then just gets right back to over the right shoulder for that fadeaway jump shot. Just reading his defender. Pretty basic, pretty simple. Now able to put the ball where he wants to put it, just sort of uses it as a jab on that pullback. Defender respects it, goes back, creates that space, gets the shot off. Doesn't really play around with the ball all that much. Talked about how much of a fan he is of that little spin. And spins are fine if you get to a spin or a shot real quick like he does. Watch his feet. Squares up, spins, gets squared again, little fadeaway jump shot. That's great offense. Here he's going to use that little hang dribble with Davis. Talked about dribbling on the sweep. That little hang dribble three. Now obviously you see a pattern here. He's done this move about five times. All right, He's just waiting for you to just go to sleep on it. And then just goes, little hang dribble, right back, three. Use that dribble as a jab. Now here, here's the re-step we talked about with Kobe last time. Same thing. You can do it in the post or you can do it on this little drive game. As he drives, he spins, plays off the defender's movement. Now, watch how the defender has to respect it. Now, he's playing that right drive, tries to cut him off. The spin comes. you got to respect the spin. But the only problem is look at the angle he has to take because of his shoulder just getting into him. On that spin, he's getting behind him, and now he's got nothing because, you know, the fadeaway, he could probably try to get it, but he's going to overplay to that. And then that big step, the little scoop shot, finish. With his ball handling taking such a, a step up in his development of it, it opens up a lot more that he can do. His pick and roll game was always pretty strong, 
But in my opinion, that ball handling, just taking the jump that it has in the last year or so, enables him to do so much more in pick and rolls. Putting the ball where he wants it and when he wants it's a huge thing because he can you know, come off the screen and roll. If they ice him, he could reject screens. He does so much off the dribble, it's really hard to defend him any type of way because he can make that shot. He could raise up over you, could drive by you, can catch and shoot. The pick and roll game with his good vision as well as his ability to change speeds and get to where he wants to get to makes it a very lethal weapon for him. So as, as you watch the film, I want you to see how he uses his dribble, how he sets his defender up, the multiple weapons that he has scoring, as well as his passing options. Let's dive in and let's go to work. Here he just simply strings out the defense. Comes off the pick and roll with a little double here. Strings out Aldridge and just gets to his, you know, gets to his kill spot. Here Washington switches. He makes little, you know, little time of this. Comes off the screen, sees the switch, changes speeds, change direction, gets to his elbow kill spot. Now he sees Whiteside playing way far back, and as a screen set from uh, Montrez Harrell, all he has to do is get by that little one dribble. Montrez does a great job with the screen here; just uses that one dribble pull up because you know Whiteside can't get to the shot. Here he just uses patience, uses the dribble, uses Zubac's screen, uses it again. You know, Porzingis just sort of comes back and plays back, and he just sort of simply pulls up. Here he just splits and gets to his kill spot in the short corner, in that little you know little corner area. Splits, you know, just dribble pull up right there, right, real simple. Now they're gonna switch. He's just gonna, he's just gonna use his oversized and overpowering. You know, body to just, just, you know, kill Cannon on this. Again, they set it, they switch, comes off, just changes changes directions, get a little bump, a little Sam Cassell special, a little pull up in the paint. This is the benefit of not only setting screens higher, especially when Big's going to drop, as well as being able to make shots from deep. The screen set here, big set way, big, you're defending the screen are way far behind, so it has that pocket of space to open up. As the screen set, Simmons sort of dies on it, and he just takes that one dribble, hop, pull up. Just makes the read here, screen set, Zubach takes him out. No one really there to, to take him, so just pulls up from behind the three. Koji sort of shouldn't, couldn't get there, and there was, you know, Covington was a little too far away to get to the shot again. Screen set, screen set again, goes around, just gets the shot off pretty quickly. Really not a lot. I just It's just a simple read. You come off your screener, see what you have. You know, as he strings out Westbrook here, it's a little, you know, a little advanced for most players, but just to simply takes it. They switch, he gets him on his hip, and just pulls up with that little fadeaway cleared out on the other on the left side. Now we'll take a look at his reads, and it's all about trying to get two defenders on the ball. Here he uses Zubach screen, all right. Buddy Hill gets taken out. You got you know Harrison Barnes trying to help. He comes off. He attracts two. Hill doesn't really get in front. No one gets in front of Zubac. He gets two on the ball right here. And then just makes the easy pass to Zubac. Nobody really helping on the backside. Here he takes Green out on the screen. You got, you know, JaVel McGee trying to stop the ball. But again, nobody bumping the roller. When you see that that roller gets behind the defense, you got to go to him. And that's exactly what it is. The bump probably should have come from, you know, the weak side there, or Avery Bradley. But nothing's there. No one's bumping, you know, Montrez. Easy dunk.
When you're a ball handler, when you get two in the ball like this, you gotta just you know sh- you hit it for a short roll for your big. Harrell does a you know good job screening. Capella and, and and Tucker gets on the ball, just an easy dump to Capella. I mean an easy dump to Harrell, and you know Harden's a little bit late on his rotation, and then just you know could have found an, another player for an open shot, but you know Montrez just goes in for the dive. Here Kawhi rejects the screen, and as he does, you know, Mills has to rotate over, opening up this, you know, the weak side shooter. Again, we're talking about putting two on the ball. As he comes off Zubach's screen, you got Horford, you got two on the ball here, dumps the, you know, dumps the Zubach. And then nobody bumps Zubach. You know, Philly does a bad job on the rotation. And then easy dump, easy finish. So simply just Washington rotated really deep into the paint. He uses Zubach's screen. Everybody just sort of swarms to the ball. Opening up weak side action right there. Open, open jump shot on the weak side. So on the hard drive here, takes it through. No one really helps on here. He gets his drive, late rotation by the defense. Just spot up on the weak side, a little sidestep three. And that's really about it. I mean, I mean, they were just simple reads. You want to set your defender up. You want to be able to get to kill spots. If they take something away or put two on the ball, you you know you dish to either your roller or dish to your player spotting up. He does a great job with his simplicity and just sort of how he plays. And he just makes those reads. He makes if someone again if the defense takes something away, he just adds to it. So just study the reads and and it's just simple offensive basketball. Kawhi's post up game is just tough to stop. I mean, he could hurt you in so many ways with his ability to face up and shoot, face up and jab or drive you. Also able to back you down, hook you, back down to jump shots, back down to a uh, you know, fadeaway game. He just hurts you so many ways because not only can he raise up and shoot, but use all these tricks and fakes and things that we're going to go over in the film. So I just want you to take one or two things from his post-up game and see how he reads defenders and how he gets a shot off. Let's go to work. Kawhi's post-up game is a lot like Jordan, a lot like Kobe, where on bigger defenders that guard them in the post, he'll go to, you know, he'll go to his face-up package, his face-up jab package, and be able to get his shot off. If it's a smaller opponent, then he wants to punish him, take him down in the post, you know, back him down hooks, back him down jump shots, get to the fadeaway, or get to a spin move package. Now, on his fadeaway and his back downs, what I want you to understand is the angles of the defender. He doesn't take his man straight, you know, straight down on a back down. He takes his man down, you know, up the lane instead of down the lane. What this does, and we'll, we'll go over it when he does it, it opens up more of the baseline to go back to that fadeaway. Also, when he goes up the line, up the lane, the defender's on his hip. On that spin back to the fadeaway, he can't, the defender has a hard time getting to that fadeaway because now he's got to get to the hip angle because it's a diagonal angle which opens up not only the fadeaway, but the re-step to the baseline. All right, let's take a look and let's analyze it. Here he's just going to simply open up. Defender doesn't really do much to challenge it. Face-up jump shot. Here he's going to take DeRozan to the post. He's going to open up with that jab. So as he opens up, see how DeRozan sort of moves with him, protects the ball on the left hip, jabs, Jump shot. See, as, as he opens up and DeRozan sort of follows that open up. Now, he could have probably tried to drive him baseline on it, but he opens him up, gets that ball to the left hip, just like Kobe, jabs him off, gets him, gets him back, opens up that little space to shoot. Here, it takes a smaller defender. Now, because he likes to spin move baseline, that defender is going to have to have to respect that. If he doesn't move like the way he does, because he thinks he's going to spin to the baseline for a jump shot, 
that opens up just sort of the back, opens up that jump shot. And you'll see how the footwork is the same with the spin move and that jab later in the film. Takes a smaller defender in the post, back down, back down. Now, it's, see how he takes him up the lane? We'll see it again. I know it's a little, you know, little mishap with the dribble here, but look at him take him up the lane. So now he, he can get back to that fadeaway and has more to the baseline to use. He likes to do the spin middle as well as the baseline. But look as he just sets his defender up. Defender plays sort of on that low side. Left foot down. Just spins across the lane and uses that jump shot. So we talked about the footwork was the same on that spin. Rather, you know, with that little jab he did a few possessions back. But as that cut goes through, he just makes that quick change of speed, spin to the baseline, takes the hit, and one. So remember, might have been the same game here, same defender. All right, Hart, he catches it. Now he just jabbed him. So now Hart's behind him. He takes that spin. Instead of now using the jab jump shot, he changes his speeds, gets to the basket. And again, that's how you play your defender. You just play off of what, you know, what they try to take away. Here's a little just bump in the post. A little Sam Cassell. You might want to Google him. He's pretty good. You know, a little bump off jump shot. Here he takes Dorian Finney-Smith, that little spin move baseline. He's a big spin move guy in the post, just like MJ and Kobe. Dorian plays high side, and not only the spin, but watch that little bump at the end to clear a little bit more space using that shoulder like we talked about earlier. Now here I want you to see the patience of him waiting for that cutter to go through and then taking Rubio out of the play. If he doesn't do that, now Rubio could not only guard his own man, but he could also dig at Kawhi. Waiting for that cut to go through, clears him out, one-on-one -on -one in the post, and now he gets to operate. All right? Gets to that fadeaway. Again, taking him up the lane just a little bit. Doesn't really budge much. And then drops that foot, fadeaway baseline. Okay, here, he sets everything up with that jab. Defender goes back then just drops that foot to the back down. Kobe, Kobe and MJ were big fans of that as well. So left hip, takes him up the lane. Now uses that fake, fake spin like he did on Dantich a few, you know, a, a few minutes back. Takes him up the lane, fake fadeaway, opens up that right, you know, right shoulder fadeaway jump shot. That's a little MJ trick right there. All right. As he, he like, you know, he did this from the wing a lot where he would drop that leg. And if that defender didn't go for it, he just dropped with him right there for a layup going that side to the left side. But as he drops that leg, again, we talked about it. The defender has to respect the moving foot in the ball. So as he drops the leg, defender moves, opens up. Now, see how that right side now is open up? And now goes right to the spin, right to that little jump shot in the paint. That's a hell of a move. You could use that on the wing or the perimeter. Hits him twice here. Hits him with that drop the leg like he just did in the high post a couple of clips ago. Barnes sort of goes for it a little bit. Goes over his left shoulder. And then, you know, sort of, remember that spin, that spin jab that he had uh, against New Orleans on that right block? He does it. Does the same thing, you know, going on a face up here. Jab, def, you know, Barnes backs up, jump shot, opens up that little space. Here uses the spin just for the jump shot. Now, same thing. You could use that in so many ways, but great bump. You know, uses his shoulder as he looks as he spins. Uses that left shoulder, and then jump shot, a little fadeaway jump shot in the post. There's a lot you can use in the post. You, know, you don't have to use everything that he uses. You can use you know, your back downs only, face up only, but he just played off his defender. Defender you know, took something away, he added to it. 
You know, he wanted to open up and jab and see how a defender was going to guard it. If he didn't, he went to the basket. Defender went back, he had the jump shot. Just play off your defender, and that's sort of all what this is all about. Kawhi is one of the more fundamental, focused, and disciplined defenders that I've ever seen. His ability to stay in his stance, have his hands not only in passing lanes, but also shadowing the ball and staying in front of the player that he's defending. He's one of the best defenders that I've ever seen. His desire just to stop the player he's defending is unmatched. I've, I've almost never seen it. As good as a defender Kobe and dominating defenders Kobe and MJ were, this guy might just be better as far as his ability to stay in front of people and his desire just to stay disciplined. So I want you to notice those things as far as staying in stance, being disciplined, shadowing with his hands. Those are the things that any defender can do. Now, maybe not get the same result, but those little things that he would do on each possession, I want you to notice because it's a great thing to watch for players and coaches alike. Now, sometimes on these possessions, it's not about hitting a home run. Sometimes it's about just winning ugly and just being consistent and solid on every possession. You're not going to get a steal on every possession, a block on every possession, or a ticket charge on every possession. But just being solid and staying to your fundamentals. Here he gets through the screen, hand, hand in his defender's face, challenges the shot. Jumps in, gets through the screen. Gets under that screen and just gets to DeRozan. Doesn't, doesn't make a great play here, but just stays solid and, and forces DeRozan into a tough contested shot. And that's, ex that's exactly what you want possession in and possession out. Because you're not going to make that home run play on every defensive possession. Or offensive possession for that matter. Harry bumps Gay. Stays down. Stays down. Challenges the shot. San Antonio comes up with it. Harry fights through. Gets to his hip, gets up again, forces forces him to a tough shot. San Antonio comes up with the ball. So these are tough, you know. Again, not making great plays here, but just fundamental plays, and puts the you know puts the player he's guarding into tough shots. Again, has to fight through screens here, stays connected, has to fight through, fight through, and just gets the hands up, hands up in the offensive player's face on a shot. Just challenging every shot. Here gets on his player's hip. He challenges his rhythm just a little bit and just gets him out of whack. Just little things that make defenders great defenders. Again, always staying with it, always staying connected. Here he guards Bledsoe. Bledsoe snakes, gets back in the play, and then challenges at the end. Just little things that make him a winning player, winning defender. Look at the hands. That's what I'm talking about with the hands right here. Never down by his sides, but always sort of up. And palms are always out. Gets through the Howard screen, gets on Harden's hip, and then a little challenge at the end, getting him out of rhythm. Here with D. Wade, he's up. I mean, see how he just always just looking and, and playing down and playing in the stance. Plays up, gets through the screen here. See how he, see how he sort of twists his body to get skinny and through that Anderson screen. All right, gets back to Wade, challenge at the end. Gets him out of, out of sync and out of rhythm. Again, shadows the ball. Gets on the hip. Gets back to Randolph. Conley's in the pick and roll. Gets to Conley. Gets on his hip. Tough right-handed shot. San Antonio comes up with the ball. Just little things. Staying in the moment and just winning ugly. Again, see the hands. See the hands are up, always trying to get, poke at the ball, not swipe at the ball, but poke at the ball. All right, step back, tough result. Again, up on LeBron, through the screen, gets back in front of LeBron, doesn't quit, stays down. All right, good, hand up. LeBron tries to post him at the elbow. Look at the hands. Now, he follows the hell out of him here just quickly, but just look at the hands shadowing. All right, probably should have pulled the hands back a little bit, but that, that's great defense. Got away with one right there. Or maybe he didn't. Who knows? Good. Just, again, gets beat. But, again, he's got super long arms, so he gets back in the play. But, you know, Gabe bodies him up. 
and then gets the hand up at the end, gets his hand on the ball. That's that's a big time play. Him and DeRozan are always a great matchup. Always a great matchup. Stays down, forces DeRozan into that step back three point shot. Again, doesn't weave his feet, doesn't foul. Just hands up. See his hands always moving, always working. Step back, hand up, hand in his face. Great defense. Good. Paul, Paul's going to try to dance around with it a little bit, but stays down, stays in it. Just tries to swipe at the ball. See how he just fundamentally just puts his hand out so it's tougher for, for Paul to go to a crossover and change, speed, uh, change direction on him. Stays down, stays down. And that challenge at the end, hand in his face, tough shot for Paul. Again, see the hand? Hands aren't down. He's always just sort of focused in on possessions. In position to help, switch, hand in, you know, trying to get his hand in the cookie jar, travel his ass off, and just force him into a tough shot and get his hand in the ball. See with Hayward, too, same thing. Hand so, so he can't get that crossover. Now, it's, it's, it's easy with that length. and I mean, he's got like 20-foot arms, but, you know, long arms, but it's tough for Hayward to get to that crossover. Now, forces him to his left, forces him away from half court. Now, it's eight in the shot clock, and he's got to take a tough shot into help. Good. Again, just multiple efforts on a possession. Forcing D- Darren Williams into a tough shot. So watch all this. I mean, so he goes from sort of just a, this little scramble out, fires out, guards the ball, ball's passed, switches to someone else. Now he's got Darren. Now forces Darren to go side to side and then forces him into the help and they come up with the ball. That's a winning possession. Now he just sort of stays in front of LeBron. Again, just showing his hands at all times. Staying down, staying down, taking space away. Hands are always moving. Hands are always moving. Stays in front. I mean, this is good, great defense. Forces LeBron to a tough shot. Good. Same thing here. Gets in LeBron's space. Stays in front. Stays down. Takes his, takes his shot away. Forces him into a fadeaway. That's winning defense. Here, I just want you to see just you know, off the ball, just making a play on the ball. You know, again, watch where he's at. Fights through. His man goes through. Tries to help onto a bigger player, and then just makes a play on the ball. That's great defense. Here's just sort of some, you know, just sort of some examples in that Miami series in the finals of just the hands, you know, the close up and the hand movement that I talked about. I mean, this is great stuff. This is just great defense. This is just fundamentally great traits to have as a winning defender at any level. Stays down, stays disciplined, hands are in LeBron's space. Maybe some fouls, maybe not, but again, just not afraid to get his hands dirty. This is great. This is great stuff. Look at the hands. Just always mirroring, just great defensive fundamentals. This guy's great to watch, man. And just to close on, on Kawhi in this presentation, first of all, I want to thank everybody for attending. Secondly, when I talk about Leonard, most elite players that are MVP caliber are players that are just sort of born great. They were great at every level. They were McDonald's All-Americans. They, you know, they have a struggle. Everybody has one, and everybody has to develop into the player that they're going to be, and it takes time. But with Kawhi... You know, coming out of high school, he wasn't in a McDonald's All-American. He was in the top 50, which is still a great, a great honor and a, and a great ranking for a player. But you know, wasn't a guarantee. Went to San Diego State. Was a spotty shooter, good athlete, long arm, strong kid. He was the 15th pick of the draft, which doesn't you know guarantee you anything as far as NBA success. He had to develop that shot into what he you know to what he had. He developed his ball handling in just different phases of his game, an elite defender, and someone who just sort of got in the gym and developed into this great player that had these good attributes coming into the game, but really hit a home run with developing and getting the most out of him. 
And at every stop that he's had, it seems like he's had a great developmental experience. San Antonio with his shooting and, and just sort of growing up as a player. Then in Toronto, sort of carrying a team on, the, on his back to a championship. And now what he's doing, you know, obviously in his short stint so far with the Clippers. So I just think that, you know, trying to teach lessons to players and coaches about NBA players, um, this guy just went from that to, you know, again, a spotty shooter to a 38% career three-point shooter in the NBA, two-time NBA champ, two-time finals MVP, two-time defensive player of the year, three-time all-NBA. Those are great attributes that he's sort of built every step of the way to get to where he is today as a player. He's great to watch. He's a sim- simplistic player that just dominates being simple. I really want to thank everyone that came out for the webinar. I re- truly do appreciate you clicking on my content. Uh, hopefully, we'll have one another one soon. You know, God bless everybody going through what we're go- we're all going through, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.